You are listening to Andy Ancap's Volunteerist Radio Hour. We're here to take on the thugs who are trying to bring United to heal. Now we bring our solution to the United disaster with volunteerism, the free market, and the non-aggression principle. I have an entire thing about this plan in that voice. We Guys. started the show, right? Yeah. Guys. <laughs> Guys. What? Yeah. We got to talk about the boss, baby. Oh yeah, shit! Yeah, yeah. yeah. say it's. Can uh, I say my favorite Sopranos it, thing ever? <laughs> oh, damn it! <laughs> no, we're talking just about one thing. Cinema. It's real quick. Just uh, oh, Jesus real, fucking Christ! This this is uh this is your chapel for this week. It's chapel. Let's go. Joining us now for the second time, making second his time. triumphant return. Adam Friedland. Second Timers Club. I got the green uh, blazer. Those like the... shoes. <laughs> oh, thank you. you. Wow. Oh, my God. Someone's shoes look like a fam. <laughs> guys, guys, these shoes, I happen to know I went up to a very cool teenager it's on the street. It's macrame by Yeezy. <laughs> yeah, it's like they're like sort of athletic. They're a sport sandal. And you know what? It's my look for the summer. <laughs> And I'm glad I busted them out. you're wearing them with socks. I'm wearing socks. them with Yo, when this brown dress socks. Live, gold we toe have from to Costco. tweet pictures of mama, these mama. abortions he's wearing <laughs> on his feet. What you talking about? This is style. Okay? I am wearing the running bull ones. <laughs> uh, how's your skin, by the way? Have you started using your snail I started. I started my program. Mm -hmm. uh, Amber's got me on right now. Skincare program. I had a really rough winter this year um, with the dr dryness and flaking. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I you know, hof hopefully in the next week I'm going to be back in action yeah. um, with a, having a beautiful shimmering face. Still can't grow a full beard, but uh, I think that's stage two of <laughs> face Fine. recovery. And you shaved after Passover. You had that horrifying mustache. I did. I I grew a mustache for to become a 30-year-old man, but it was uh, just, it, I can't grow it in the middle. I'm sort of the opposite of Hitler, guys. I'm a really good guy. <laughs> Who's you, the guy in from many ways, you're the opposite of that. Hitler. <laughs> Uh, in more ways than one. Mick Mars. Mick Mars. That's it. He had that famously yeah. the catfish. It was, oh yeah. It's a good look. You might want to look more into, into it's, like filling it out. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Now he has Korean skincare. He's gonna expose the whole beautiful. I'm gonna punum. look so fucking hot. I can't. I'm gonna look like a porcelain baby. Adam does kind of look like a woman who's on a K-pop show now. <laughs> oh, it's true. Like yeah. K drama. Yeah. Let's talk about Boss Baby. Wait, Speaking I just want to say about one, my one <laughs> soprano. <laughs> oh God. Damn it. It's worth it. It's worth it. Sorry, I'm I'm busting the I'm busting your flow, guys. Um, I'm coming in here. I'm <laughs> I got the green blazer on for my second time. <laughs> <laughs> Peering on chops. Okay, there's this scene right at the beginning of the scene. Carmela's in the kitchen and she's facing a picture of Anthony Jr. Right, who's <laughs> <laughs> one of the ugliest people I've ever seen. <laughs> and true. she's holding He's a an pencil. Ugly child. And she's sketching the picture. <laughs> Of Anthony Jr. And it shows for one second her drawing <laughs> of her disgusting son. And it's the funniest part of all six and a half seasons. What is it? Six... But this last one was two seasons. Are you sure that wasn't in a dream sequence? No, they had great dream sequences. They sucked. Stop okay, let's look, we're, not, we're not going down. We're not I'm going sorry. down this best. Thank you. Let's, let's get back back on Boss track. Like baby. I said, we have we have Adam on the show because Adam has a story to tell that you've probably already heard. But it's it's still like funny. Rashomon. It yeah. requires multiple exactly. telling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. we're going to talk to you about a few other things that are burning up the news with Adam. Uh, before we get that, we need to report for Matt Cinema. Matt Cinema Christmas <laughs> on Boss Baby. Oh, yeah. You uh, actually went to see... I went and saw Boss Baby. It was, my friend and I were ha having dinner, and we're like, oh, what is, like, really, it's too hot, and I'm stupidly wearing pants, and what do we want to do? And it's like, well, let's see what's terrible at the theater. I mean, we saw the last Transformers movie together, you know, <laughs> we like a good time in the theater, smuggling some rum. And it's like, oh, Boss Baby. And we're like, that's the stupidest thing we could pick, so we went with it. Uh, and so, yeah, we got some booze and we went in and it really did deliver. It was incredibly entertaining. Um, for one thing, the real dominant motif is CGI children's asses. Like every other joke is a shot of a child's either butt crack and diapers or just bare ass. A, a production by Brian Cox in conjunction with Podesta Films <laughs> and Jeffrey Epstein Pictures. <laughs> I mean, it's funny because obviously, like, it was very. It, there's a lot of poopy and you know pop potty jokes, but there, I found out there's a really thin line between 
like juvenile potty humor and just straight up child pornography. And it was right on that line. That is that is the line that most artists have trouble with. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. if you create anything, you're like, this is really good, but am I getting into child porn territory? <laughs> like, if you're challenging yourself creatively, you should be having that problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, like, <clears throat> Matt, this is what, like, okay, we, what, we've all seen the poster, yeah. and that's basically everyone well, was okay. re- responding to. Yeah. What is, like, the premise He's of this the boss movie? baby. What are you talking about? <laughs> but, like... Th- I, Wait, he's a Bruce Springsteen baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, no. Okay. Basically, he in this world, if that's what's really fascinating is the world that they create. Uh, is that it? Really, is like a brutal piece of propaganda in its own way. It 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 prof it it posits that babies come from a factory for a company called Baby Core, and most babies come to Earth as children, but some babies who, when they're tickled, don't laugh become managers of baby core and then they all live in like they work in an office building where they like basically manufacture the other babies and then promote people wanting to have babies on earth isn't this, is this exactly what scientologists yeah, believe i was about to say <laughs> i have to say uh, as a high person this is so upsetting to listen to no, it's very good it's excellent and uh, I, I loved it and they send the boss baby down to earth he's one of the executives because to be the little brother voiced of by kid. alec baldwin yeah, yeah. because there's this r- company called Puppy Co. that's basically like a giant puppy mill that's supposedly coming out with a beautiful, perfect, cute puppy that's going to be so <laughs> cute that people aren't going to want kids anymore, and so there will be no children. Wow. It's basically a prequel to Children of Men. This is the, um, yeah, it's the decadent West. Is yeah, and so they send the boss baby down to stop it, but what kind of annoyed me is that what the boss this baby is does... This white nationalist propaganda. I'm yeah. sorry. What the boss this baby does disturbing. is more like corporate espionage, and you wouldn't send somebody from management to do that. You would, like, you know, hire it out to another company. So that wasn't believable. Uh, but what was really, like, grim <laughs> and depressing about it is... Uh, is the way that it sets up capitalism as like not just a transient human sit- structure, but as the foundation and basis for all existence. Mm. Like they, the babies are in this corporation. They have money. Like he has money that he gets from working there. So That's like they the have dream. capitalism where humans are literally forged. And some people say might say, well, the the way the movie is kind of suggests. The way the movie is set up, it sort of suggests that this is all the younger brother imagining. Like, he's basically dealing with having a younger brother and oh, what it does in his family. And this is like his, him imagined, his imagined way of, like, coping with it. But as Lacan teaches us, <laughs> ideological fantasies structure reality. So that is really, like, that's part of what the boss baby is. It's to are tell there- us that we cannot escape capitalism uh, anywhere. Are there adults in the Boss Baby universe? Yes. Does he interact with them? And he like, does, but he doesn't. He pretends to be a regular baby in front of them. Oh, I see. So oh, it's sort of like, like the Toy secret Story. life of pets. Right. Yeah. The, the kid's the only one who knows that he's a Boss Baby, <laughs> okay. even though he wears a suit and carries a briefcase. <laughs> is there is there a part where the Boss Baby is like, even I, the Boss Baby, the smartest baby, could not fight against the tyranny of a sick judge ripping me from my father Alec Baldwin's arms? <laughs> And delivering me to my bitch mother, Kim Basinger, and poisoning my mind against mm-hmm. her. Uh, how about this? Uh, Glenn Gary, Glenn Boss Baby. <laughs> well, there Holy is, there shit, is, a, there yeah. is a Glenn Gary joke. It's in the trailer. He's I with these other babies it. around a conference table, and the kid has a cookie. He goes, put the cookie down. Cookies are for closers, which is going to kill among the four-year-olds who go to see this movie. Ch- check this out. Uh, ABC, always be crying. <laughs> but the real, the real, That's the real, good, uh, the like real the things that power the movie are is that the boss baby. <laughs> all babies know about this when they're born, but they when they stop sucking on a pacifier, they forget it. And also, the bo- the boss babies stay babies forever because they drink magic formula that keeps them as babies, so they don't grow. Mm. That's just Sounds steroids. Like it stunts your growth. <laughs> and, like if you want your baby to be a baby forever, you're listening. You've somehow bred. That was the give same, your baby steroids. That was the milk that uh, that doctor was giving Michael Jackson. Yes, it was it was milk to help him stay a baby forever. And there's a scene towards the end where the boss baby goes back to Baby Co. having succeeded and gets a huge party, and they're spraying him with formula, and it, honest to God, looks like bukkake. <laughs> Like my, we were like looking at each other like anybody who goes to this movie unattended with a child deserves to be chemically castrated, mm-hmm. and including both of us. <laughs> <laughs> then they go to when they're spending time in baby car. I'm like, 
I was just yelling basically under my breath, like, well, does he have a house? Does he go home? Like, are there restaurants and stuff? Like, are there other babies doing like manual labor and things? Are like, yeah. the, uh, is there a boss baby city or there yeah. boss baby municipal workers? Right, because workers? there is money. He has a are big Are there boss baby couples? Yeah. Are there married babies? So, uh, Boss Baby, so you would recommend going to see a movie Highly because it's a dumb Boss internet Baby. joke? Just go in there. It's, it is, you will, you'll be occupied either by being viscerally upset by the really perfectly rendered digital baby asses. And when we walked out, I was like, holy shit, I'm glad we decided not to see the 3D one. Uh, and then also uh, asking questions the entire time about how this is supposed to work. Because it's absolutely The baffling. universe is full of holes. It's totally weird. Like the the basic the premise is like they have to get people to want to have babies. Like they have to market having babies, but like there's no role for because the his mom gets pregnant. Like his mom has a, a belly, but then Boss Baby shows up in, in a in a uh, taxi. Like in the, he shows up to their house in a, a taxi wearing Unattended. a suit. <laughs> Unattended with a suitcase. A Wait, I was gonna say, like you describing the plot of this movie sounds like they gave it to like a team of screenwriters, but like had them base it on a journal that was found in like the home of one of those like Henry Darger style <laughs> outsider artists. Yeah, about, apparently like, it is based on a ch- book series of children's books. No, it is uh, David Mamet actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, if we haven't uh, uh, disturbed you and disgusted you enough already, talking about Boss Baby, let's talk about something. Even more disturbing, which is coordinated online harassment. It's, Adam, uh, awesome. Adam, you you recently gaslit and assaulted a woman. <laughs> Tell us about that. I I was I defended the all of yours. You uses you honor. Start from the beginning. <laughs> Show me on the doll. Show I got in doll. trouble for for being a good friend, actually, now, which happens to me constantly. If you're folks. if you're a crossover, you know, listener to us and come town, I'm sorry to, to cannibalize this material, but if you're not, you may have heard us make allusion to it. But you know, Adam was just visiting L.A., the, c- the city of LA. Angles. Yeah, the ang- it's an angular. <laughs> Getting that uh, Zog money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, you had a uh, you had a, a a cab ride that that turned very salty on account of us. Uh huh. Well, I mean, first, well, I was. I was in the hills at this uh, pool party. The hot Hollywood Hills. Those <laughs> and there were a lot of gentlemen that looked similar to me. And I couldn't figure it out. And then a lot of older men as well. And uh, <laughs> it was just older men and then uh, clean, shaven, smooth gentlemen like myself. This is the uh, prosciutto and melon pizza gate. <laughs> <laughs> and um, anyway... Uh, I took a sip of this drink, and then I woke up <laughs> uh, 12 hours later. Anyway, I'm in the new X-Men movie. I got a, <laughs> I got a, I got a walk on it in Logan. Logan 2, uh, which I'm pretty excited about. I play uh, his, his best friend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm, I was in a, I was in L.A. I didn't. I was going to meet my uh, my friend Stavros. And I got a, in a lift uh, because it's fairly, it's way cheaper in L.A. than it is in New York. That's not interesting. And, but in New York, <laughs> okay, okay, it's weird though. You're because, doing that comedian thing. It's like a reflex. You cannot not yeah. compare New York to L.A. In New York, no, he's doing the comedian, the comedian thing about uh, talking about comparing prices of things. Yeah. And oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Don't you yeah. triple parentheses? <laughs> parentheses, <laughs> parentheses. <laughs> parentheses. <laughs> so comedians are doing that, and comedians sit on, uh, occupy the majority of the seats on the National Security Council, and somehow we're fucking bombing Syria now because of all the comedians on there oh no, yeah but it's racist to point that out that they're all comedians um speaking of i got tickets to uh dun 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 dun, dun new rules <laughs> oh, hell yeah. i got tickets yeah how, how awesome was that by brandon way? wardell ruin- I- <laughs> he had brandon wardell on we were him. supposed to go and then he's like you got the tickets to the rehearsal i'm gonna get us tickets to the friday show and then we didn't, we didn't. God damn it. Brandon, he, he felt, he, he fucking flaked everything. on me. Brandon was on the show. Okay, so I'm in a lift. I'm going to meet my pal, Stavros, come town. Um, 
And in New York, sorry to do this, Andy. Ah, oh, you oh, motherfucker. In New York, it's just a guy that was from Senegal and doesn't know how he got here. And he does he leaves you alone, lets you get to your fucking destination. But in L.A., it's always like uh, some dude that's probably a failed actor. And he's just like, so what's your experience with rideshare? You know? Oh, <laughs> Which is just God. like, oh. Walk. It's like, hey, I'm Damien, triple threat. I don't know if you saw. I'm a 4.9, uh, but uh, an L.A. 10. <laughs> Uh, the way you get rid of that is you start telling them the truth about Syria. That's what I do in every car that I'm in. But in LA, they won't talk to you. So he's like, "What? You know, this guy's like, what are you doing here?" And I'm just like, first of all, I was surprised they were even talking. I'm like, "What the fuck are you doing talking to me?" And there was a lady in the lift already, and so I was like, "Oh, I'm here for a podcast." And he's like, oh, uh, what's, you know, what's that like? And she's like, a pot. And then the lady sitting next to me said, oh, a podcast. That's very interesting. I, uh, what's your podcast called? And I can immediately tell, I can immediately tell that she would not like the podcast. You just looked her up and down and thought, no, you will not know this information about me. It was just a vibe thing. And, you know, that's one of my talents. As an X-Men, actually, in the Logan movie, (laughs) my talent is that I could tell if someone is a cum boy or not. Um, She was not. Yeah, she's not. The guy that called all the JCCs with the bomb threats, probably. (laughs) <laughs> Probably a cum boy. Uh, uh, so, like, you, you know, you're thinking, you're like, okay, don't want to tell her my podcast. So I was like, so you're like, so I'll she's like, what's play it called? It safe. I was like, uh, it's comedy. That that was my response, right? Because I wasn't trying to necessarily engage. Nice touch. Nice touch. It's yeah. comedy. So you know, whatever. So then she's like, yeah, I got a podcast myself. It's a, a political podcast. And so in order to change the subject from cum. <laughs> into safer water for what i understood like book reading ass water <laughs> i was like oh shit my friends have a have a political podcast too that's crazy i think it's like i i think i think people like it see this and, is why this is why i'm not really that sympathetic because if she said oh i have a political podcast too or i have a political podcast i would have said that's cool yeah i should have <laughs> shut up and I should have not said anything. Yeah, but you don't do that. But I don't do that because I'm my father and I'm 30. <laughs> and okay, but uh, so I was like, "Oh, my friends have one." She's like, "What's it called?" And I'm like, "It's called a uh, chop chop a trap house." It's like, and then the second I said that, <laughs> just the steel shutter is just slammed down, rushing out of her face, and she's like, "Oh, oh, no!" <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, "So I was like, what?" <laughs> they like. I was about to say, like, you know, they like plan out what they're going to say before the show and stuff. It's pretty good. (laughs) Because that's like my bar on what makes a good podcast. Not just like me and Simon Dick just call. Um, So she said, uh, so I said, really? She was, she was like that. She, I I was surprised she wouldn't like it. I don't know. And she's like, yeah, they're horrible people. (laughs) And I'm like, well, I just said to you, they were my friends. And so I was like, no, I think they're pretty nice. They're my, they're my pals. Uh, I don't think they're bad people at all. So she was really the only person in the lift making any accusations about anyone's character or anything like that. It's true. She uh, could have just stopped it. She could have just stopped there and said, oh, yeah, I heard of it. Uh, yeah, sorry. but she yeah. persisted. But she persisted <laughs> against all odds. Um, and uh, so I, she said, yeah, they, they oftentimes will conduct coordinated harassment campaigns of women in POC. Yeah. <laughs> so then I said, uh, have you listened to Trump? <laughs> like, I don't think that's what that is. And um, she started getting really upset because really the way the conversation happened was she'd make a statement and then I'd ask a question because I was like sort of See, that's a mistake. See, that's called sea lion. her. That's sea lion. That's it's sea called sea lion. Uh, and you, she's not there to do emotional labor for you. I was just trying to understand. Is that what sea Yeah, yeah. It's a sea lion. It's basically is. asking any kind of follow-up on any statement. But isn't that anything. what, like, these women with the, you know, with the candles and the sheets, isn't that what they want men to do is ask them questions? Not randos. I don't think they want randos to ever ask them questions. They don't, yeah. well, I mean, they don't want. I like, saw a lady with a mattress. But a rando is ideas. just a guy you haven't fucked yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good attitude to take. So I was like, so I was just confused why she thought that. Like, I just sort of wanted to know. Yeah. And uh, I was like, well, first of all, I think that's kind of weird because, you know, I have a 
female friend that's on uh their podcast hashtag not your shield <laughs> and uh yeah so then she was like yeah one and i was like okay I'm, i don't know uh, and then i was like well that's kind of like aren't you just like by saying that all these people are white men aren't you just acting like you're erasing the identities of all the women and pcs why were you having right? this argument dude why oh. i just wanted why were you having tweets in the back of a lift why were you exchanging I was just, tweets i don't know i don't know why i engaged but she seemed to be very upset and i was kind of having fun i was bored at that point <laughs> i'm i wasn't harassing but i was interested in uh seeing where it was going anyway point is it sort of gets on the subject of sadie doyle and i said well i think that she's kind of unhinged Sexist. right she's like tweeted at my friend like for like three days on end <laughs> and like you know my friend was just responding with pictures of dr <laughs> evil <laughs> <laughs> that said right <laughs> I didn't say that I didn't say that but I was like God he was like a brick wall he was magnificent oh that, that was, was beautiful that was one of Nick's finest performances yeah, yeah that was really it, it that blows was me really away that that didn't Touching. become that didn't become a meme way of like deflecting someone or trolling yeah, someone because yeah. it's so perfect oh it was oh. incredible anyway I didn't say that about Nick but I was like I know she's like tweeted at friends of mine for like days on end like every 20 minutes and, and has I, actually done coordinated campaigns to get people fired from their yeah. jobs that's that's just something said. we've never done right she's like gotten people fired like and you know limited their ability to earn a living like i think and so she said so th after that whole thing i said her only response was unhinged <laughs> unhinged and i'm like yeah i think that's unhinged and she's like you see you don't get it you really don't get it like that's exactly uh the point that i'm making of like how Basically, she's a genius, and I'm a dumb idiot <laughs> and a dummy dum dum, <laughs> and I don't get my misogyny. But uh, obviously, you know, I think. And did I, you respond extremely she was well just to saying that, that and no, immediately she pick was, up the bell hooks? No, she was saying that that um, that's a gendered term, and that in later on she tweeted about it. She claimed that I called women unhinged, <laughs> not one particular person. That is. Potentially, I don't want to sound ableist, but unhinged. <laughs> Adam in the back of the car. She we just got to get rid of women. I can't stand the fucking complaining. <laughs> I mean, granted, I was dressed and uh, it w in my Andrew Dice Clay t-shirt. <laughs> I was wearing my Dice Man Cometh t-shirt. And <laughs> I was get rid of the broads. I was smoking a cigarette straight around your face. head. Yeah, around <laughs> and no, hickory also dickory and dock, wearing... Sadie can suck my cock so the <laughs> also wearing a mystery hat so i was just trying to ask her so the last part was i was just trying to ask her like isn't it sexist to deny that women d didn't like hillary like to deny that Dude. oh and, what and what her face doing? and so then she starts going this is a person who has crafted a elaborate i didn't know who it mind was. castle world where hillary is president you don't wake up a sleepwalker adam <laughs> And never wake up Adam, a sleepwalker. This is like if you see three people in matching jumpsuits and the same Nikes, and you're like, "What? Well, you can't get on a comet by killing yourself. You know that, right? I was defending your honor, guys. <laughs> anyway, so she, in the middle of like my a question that I was sitting on, she just starts going, this conversation is over. This conversation is over. <laughs> And I was like, but I just, no. Oh, oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. That is, that's actual done, assault. Right? So then I'm like, uh, so then we're like sitting there in silence. And cool. the cab driver's like looking at me and he's like, just mouthing like, what the fuck? Because <laughs> <laughs> like, um, so then, you know, I feel bad. It's quiet. I feel like I got in like some oh, sort of like no. argument in a relationship and that we're taking like a quiet like silent car ride together <laughs> and another 10 minutes in the car with this lady so i was just like um i just like broke the silence by saying like listen like i didn't wake up this morning trying to i see you're upset and like i didn't want to hurt <laughs> i didn't want to hurt anyone's feelings oh. you're and asking I feel, for mercy that is the worst thing i know i know because i was on the right side of history but anyway <laughs> So I was like, "Listen, I'm I'm sorry. Like, I didn't. I'm I'm sorry. I can see you're upset, and I I'm not like an asshole, um, <laughs> and I don't want to like wake up and just 
mess with people that I don't know and make them upset. And, you know, I think I'm a pretty nice person, actually. Oh, no. <laughs> and a so nice then she goes, you, 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 guy. I, was, I didn't know. I didn't know that you can't say that you're nice. <laughs> I don't know. That's you didn't get the, the press rules. release. I didn't get the press release from uh, from Chelsea Clinton <laughs> that I'm not allowed to say that. And so, so then she's like, "Exactly, a nice guy." When I said person, but <laughs> she was like, "A nice guy." She's the one gendering you. She exactly. She's yeah. like, "You're a nice guy." Like you, honestly, it was like in the tone of, "You're too stupid to ever get woke," and like, <laughs> "You'll never, you'll never be on my level. You're just <laughs> a coordinated harassing." Brocheless piece of shit. I mean, she didn't. She obviously that was just the tone of all of it. <laughs> the last, the last part, right, <laughs> of the story is like. So she rejects my apology. We're sitting in a silent cab, and the driver feels really awkward. So he just goes to me like after another five minutes of silence, he goes. So what's your experience with ride <laughs> <laughs> Which is was the first question? <laughs> uh, are you sure this wasn't a malfunctioning Johnny Cab? So I was like, recall. So I was like, honestly, I don't really take. Uh, I live in New York. I don't really take uh, Lyft or Uber that much. But um, I'm taking Uber this week because it's very cheap in LA, and uh, it's much more expensive in New York. And he goes to me, "Well, we're not in Uber. We're in Lyft." And I'm like, "Oh, I just call them all Uber." Uh, but actually, I deleted Uber, and then I looked at her. Oh, no. <laughs> this was like, oh, no. this was my Larry David moment. This oh, was like, God. I couldn't stop myself. We were like pulling up. We were pulling up to the place I needed to go. I couldn't stop myself because I knew this would just infuriate her. Oh, but God. I just said, um, actually, I deleted Uber because the CEO is sexist <laughs> to women. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I, I wish we had dashboard cam footage of her right after you left. Like literal steam shooting yeah. out of her ears. That was a more awkward uh. cab ride than fucking uh, Travis Bickle and Martin Scorsese <laughs> in Taxi Driver. <laughs> you know who lives in that apartment? <laughs> Hillary Clinton. <laughs> Hillary Clinton lives in that apartment. It was, it was, it was, it's not the White House, though. You know who's in there? You're going to laugh at this. <laughs> well, like, look, you're, actually, for the future... Uh, you don't need to defend us at all, ever, yeah. especially not in person. I don't even need to mention you, really. Just, That's just probably enjoy, the best. Just enjoy the show and know that it's not Imagine for everyone. if I said, come town. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so she basically, she then said, so then I was, like, nervous because some of the fans said they found the tweets. And I was like, they were like, oh, should we tell other people? And I was like, no. And then I guess that people found out. It's public speech. People found it. Whatever. I don't want to. Yeah, she went on a tweet storm. She went on a tweet storm. And um, I was like nervous because I was like, I don't know. I don't want this person to get harassed. I don't want to prove her point, you know, like. And so, but the, the, the fan, the, the come, come nation, there's so much love in come nation. (laughs) Um, The fans, uh, one of them responded to the one, like the serious, uh, women don't give me the time of day vibes tweet and uh posted a picture of me and stav kissing and said actually he's in a happy loving relationship (laughs) (laughs) and someone's like that's great someone's like actually you harassed a queer jewish youth (laughs) 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 which is like i think that's that's, that's positive. The best way to yeah, I think that's yeah. like yeah. positive. Uh, like, like, the, the, like the whole thing, like we, like the targeted harassment thing, just like means that you've made you're popular. You have a lot of followers, and you made fun of someone's thoughts on a public forum. Yeah, someone's like the thoughts that they've broadcast in a public forum, and you made fun of it. That's and, the that's the only that's one of the confluences between liberals and alt right is that they both think posting is like war. And that if you like quote tweet someone or just even say anything about him uh, and more than like two people tweet out that person, that's like assault. It's the same way that the alt right guys are like, we're ready for meme war. Well, but it's because those are the people who do like to participate in pylons. So, of course, it's what they ultimately fear the most. Yeah. So in their mind, they're like, let's go after this, you know, whatever, ninth grader in Tucson who... You know, it doesn't know what speech to use. Uh, that that their greatest fear is it being turned against them, and so they interpret it when there's two people being like, "Oh, I, I don't agree with you." Well, it's it's like a it's like a click, like any other click. You know, like I didn't think that this was like a big sh- 
podcaster person but she's got like a following you know like and there she got like a response on twitter it's not like it's you know the other thing is i I gotta fucking say you really can't talk shit in la you can't talk shit on hillary (laughs) you can't talk shit on any fucking movies because someone's probably there that worked on boss baby (laughs) so you gotta be like oh that was good that was good i would like to meet them because i have a lot of questions i feel like if i was in brooklyn for the most part but dc is like that DC is totally like Yeah, you that. can't yeah. even talk shit about the city of DC on the streets or else you'll get her <laughs> people will get They all kiss shit. each other's asses. They're like, yeah. okay, ideologically, supposedly on paper, we're diametrically opposed, but there's no reason why we can't go out and get a bland burger. <laughs> people, yeah, people in DC love eating a burger that tastes and uh, feels like a hockey puck. They're and very then, upset about these burgers they then, had in DC. Then, they're like, they they're, they're so traumatized. The caliphate, the caliphate should honestly take over DC. It would make it a better city. It would end the chronic alcoholism problem among wonks, and they would have quality halal meat. I have another idea. Boss baby burger. There we go. <laughs> oh, okay. Now we're talking. Made with real baby. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was. It was. It was. It was really weird, and I didn't think that anyone would find out who it was, or that she would have been tweeting about me. But I guess while she was sitting there angry, she was. Dragging me for her, for the all her for this her, is, her high sweeties online. This is definitely the most boring episode of Black Mirror. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Actually, that's probably not true. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's a very hit or miss show. Your joke what, doesn't hold. What, what if your phone knew your name? <laughs> <laughs> what if what if you what if you and your computer had the same birthday? <laughs> 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 what if what what if what if your what if your mate was a TV? <laughs> what if what if you had to plug your your dog into a wall and charge him? <laughs> what if what if uh, what if instead of someone saying, "Oh, uh, how was your day?" they said, "What did you download?" <laughs> <laughs> um, can we segue from uh that potentially uh that that dystopian future uh to to ours and uh i, I just wanted to get you know adam's thoughts on uh i think word of the week no no phrase of the week phrase of the year <laughs> Holocaust censors. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. yeah we, we were just saying, like, we don't know why everyone's yelling at Sean Spicer. Like, that's hilarious. You have to yeah. pick your battle. I, a, a, a room full of the finest comedy minds could be locked together with typewriters for a hundred years, given the boss baby infinity immortality serum, and uh-huh. they would not come out with, with a fucking phrase as funny as Holocaust centers. <laughs> it's good. I mean, yeah. I, I, I'm, a, I'm not. As a, I'm not that angry. Another funny take, which was I heard, <laughs> heard a lot. Really, oh, you're, not, you're not. It's hilarious. <laughs> Why, yeah. I mean, if people are asking me to be mad about it. Like my mom, my dad called me. My both my parents on speakerphone called me about it. <laughs> and they, <laughs> and and they the, were like, you heard about the Holocaust centers? And they were like, on Passover for them to do this on Passover. <laughs> Adam, <laughs> how dare he? <laughs> anyway, I just think the funniest part to me was that Sean Spicer called Sheldon Anderson <laughs> yes, to yes. apologize. That, that's the Trump White House. Like you have to call the richest whatever race you offended. <laughs> really, it's which is offensive because he's not. A representative, but like of Sheldon Jews. Adelson is like he's like not even he there is a mentally. Mute. He's, like, all, he's, he's like, all cartilage he's, at yeah. this point. Yeah. Who, you know, and the, the real victim in all his this, his organs and, have ossified. <laughs> he, yeah, he. I've seen him before. He's like goes around in one of those like uh, golf cart. Where, like, do you, where have you seen him? Oh, at Jewish community functions oh, okay. in Las Vegas, <laughs> growing up. Vegas, dude. Oh, yeah, 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 I'm from Vegas. Yeah. Um, the, f- I, I mean, I think the main victim in all this, and I think this is the lesson we can learn, is is Bibi Netanyahu because he should have gotten that call and he should have been apologized to by Sean Spicer because he is the president of all of us. <laughs> <laughs> Bibi is, unfortunately, he's infallible. He's like the Pope to us. Yeah. He's greater than the Pope. Yeah. For me, it really proved that Sean Sp- I'm, I don't even know if this is true, but in my heart it's true. Sean Spicer has to be a child of the American suburbs because like, he couldn't think of a phrase and like instead of the word camp... 
he thought of center, like fucking guitar center or a goddamn like electronic store in his shitty exurban hometown. Yeah, he's a. Uh, Come on down to Holocaust Center. I feel like he's just crying so much of the day that like I gotta. I mean, I I gotta give him the pass. And also, he's just he's so funny oh, too. He's hilarious. Like, yeah, he's so, he's so, so fucking good. funny. He is the best one of all of them, and I hope he stays around. In fact, after Trump is president, I want Spicer to stay on as press secretary. Just hiccups be, and tears. <laughs> he just has to be comprehensively criticized show them all well, for the, hours well, a day by the president of the united states that that maniac just with, with the gray suit that he wore at the first presser like when donald trump afterwards was like you looked like absolute shit <laughs> <laughs> that's actually that's like, why that's why that's why trump met with steve harvey <laughs> oh man my oh, man my oh, man you coming out to address the united states of america how you looking like you still got the damn coat hanging in there? Now, Sean, you got to think like a husband, but act like a wife. Oh, man. How are you going to represent the United States of America with only three buttons on that suit? We need Spicer out there in the boat-sized double We need bread. him. Yeah. We need him in a 12-button eggplant, 1998 NBA draft, first round. Sean, I want my president in aubergine. Oh. Sean, we got you a double-breasted vest. <laughs> I mean, I'm still waiting for the fucking Ben Carson, Steve Harvey going around fixing the inner cities of America tour. Well, like, well, we were promised that. It this, hit a yep. slight roadblock recently. <laughs> we got to talk about this. Oh, because he got stuck. Ben Carson got stuck in an elevator today. <laughs> yeah, this is we Another one so bites the dust. <laughs> yeah. I, I did not consider myself as much stuck inside the Tyson Krupp contraption as much as I felt as though the world was stuck around me. There's no way to prove that the elevator wasn't moving, whereas the world had just stopped. I think it, I believe it was the prophet Jehoshaphat in the book of Gargamel who said that the man who travels the man who travels in a in a stuck pontoon boat does not see the river move for he is moving the river i want to say to the firefighters who rescued me though i could have escaped from it on my own my own talents that I appreciate you for risking your lives and your family's lives for reaching into the metallic beast and, <laughs> that was so good. <laughs> How long was he in there? And in... oh, like four minutes, three, three eons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what is a minute to God? Exactly. That person is God. <laughs> no, uh, that fucking rules. But actually, Adam, uh, thing, I wanted to ask you about a num- another member of the Trump cabinet that you had a very funny story about, uh, Stephen Miller. Oh that, shit! That bug-eyed. Yeah. Psycho looking like you haven't yeah. heard too much about him. I was lately. yeah, yeah, yeah. LA, so yeah. my like he was like like the sort of like like skull. It really makes me worried that he's in a sub bunker of the White House with like a big whiteboard and it's all filled with a horrifying thing that he's going to unleash on us. So my so I was just in L.A. I'm from Santa Monica originally, like West L.A. Liberal. They used to call it the the People's Republic of Santa Monica. They'd always like elect uh, fucking socialists and stuff because they for their city council and stuff. Anyway. Uh, my cousin, and then we moved to Vegas and whatever. Uh, my cousin went to Santa Monica High with Stephen Miller, and uh, he said that a couple things. We we just we talked about it in LA. Um, one, well, like Adam, like in in profiles I've read of Stephen Miller, yeah. like it talks about how he like forged his conservative blade and ire going to the ultra liberal Santa well, Monica High School. I hate to like go on like the Paul uh, prison. Prison Paul, what's his name? <laughs> Prison Planet. <laughs> but like in a place like Santa Monica, him like getting into conservative talk radio, like every kid was in like the liberal like upbringing was encouraged to have a thing. And so they were like, well, that's Steve's thing. Like, you know, like the, he, he's just really into Rush Limbaugh. Like, <laughs> the, you know, like it's weird, oh, but yeah, like, like that's it's a healthy interest. Yeah. It, pass. He's a teenager and he's just gotten into some weird shit and like, we'll it just let him get into it and then he'll learn on his own. Oh my God. He like definitely called tale. his parents by their first names for sure. Uh-huh. He'd be like, you know, whatever. So it's just an Alex P. Keaton situation. For sure. Yeah. For sure. You know, like uh, sort of, uh, upper middle class liberal jewish family um but yeah he got into conservative talk radio uh and then he's like started writing op-eds for local newspapers 
um, where he'd say like, oh, everyone in my high school is fucking and they're giving the kids condoms so they could fuck and it's so messed up that they're all fucking each other with the condoms that the school gives them. <laughs> and if the, those condoms weren't there, they definitely wouldn't be having <laughs> sex with each other. And the school is encouraging this behavior. Uh, but my cousin was telling me that he sort of pet, like breaks it down to uh, the fact that he was like, he remembers like when they were like 11 or 12. It was actually his girlfriend, Kelsey, was in the same class as him. Like, he started male pattern baldness. She's, <laughs> she's like, it's just, it just comes oh, from man. that. She's yeah. like, it's all. Oh, God, yeah. No, he didn't have a chance. Yeah, he didn't have a chance. Well, like he, yeah. he started he started going bald real young. But the, obviously, the best, the best story uh, that they told me was he ran for student body president uh, their senior year. And he uh, gave a speech where... At the end of the speech, he got booed by all 4,500 students <laughs> of the entire school. And so he ended the speech by saying, um, why should we be expected to pick up after ourselves when we pay janitors to do that for us? And literally the entire school just started booing him. <laughs> and he got, he, he's so hateable that he made kids like boo littering. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Fuck you, bitch. I'll work rules. <laughs> And so, yeah, but it, 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 I just imagine him, this just bald 17 year old boy on stage instead of like, you know, in high school, it sort of is punk rock. I hate to, <laughs> that's hate, right. I hate to say what prison that's Paul is right, trying to Adam. say, but like, conservatism is the new punk it's rock. It's the new punk rock. And yeah, no, th- fuck the Beatles. Uh, uh, no, so fucking, you know, in high school, I, I just spent my entire time making everyone think I was cool or trying to make everyone think I'm cool. This dude literally wanted to antagonize the entire school. He wanted to be loath. He was literally a wrestling villain. He was literally on stage getting booed by his entire school, which for any other uh, normal, from what I would consider normal human being, like there a would be a traumatic scarring of the the scariest... yeah. end in a germy spoken class today kind of situation. Yeah. Exactly. That would be the like carry moment, like just getting laughed at and booed <laughs> by your entire school. But this dude was on stage, like putting his hand, cupping it behind <laughs> his ear, like, can you hear that? Suck up. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck the poor. For a certain type of broken brain individual who is met with revulsion by everyone they meet they internalize that and and uh make sense of it in their own mind by thinking well if everyone hates me and is disgusted by me that means that i'm right like like being hated is proof that your ideas are too much for the mob you know the dumb normies to handle, and that you're just too fucking logical for them. Yeah, it's I mean this Cruz is disease. very basic antisocial, yeah, like psychology. That's what they're like. Yeah, but or I do like should, the idea of, of him arrested. as like the high school punk rocker, like He's in a, punk like, rock, like dude. on stage, like in front of his entire school. Like, you know, Sid Vicious when he went on his solo act that would just be like smacked up doing covers of Iggy Pop and then would just be like, do I look like I piss myself? <laughs> Fuck you, wanker. <laughs> We're go- oh no, I'm going to do uh, fucking uh, affirmative action is racist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like the Gigi Allen of conservatism. Dude. <laughs> it is the new punk rock, dude. I agree. He, ta- he takes a county uh, property tax bill, like shoves it up his ass. <laughs> he's got all the Gigi Allen tattoos, but they're just logical fallacies. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, like, there, there is a certain logic to this, like, doing something so radically uh, unpopular. There's something a little punk about that. But what he was doing was essentially, as a teenager, calling into the Larry Elder radio, conservative talk oh, yeah, radio yeah. program. So, like, sorry, I'm yeah. still not buying it. No, 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 yeah. I'm sorry, sucking up. To, that's that's <laughs> like just a brown weird. nose. Yeah, yeah. That's a nerd. Any, anything that people don't like is punk rock. <laughs> yeah. like, that's true, dude. Yeah, I mean, I I find I find that like when I really fart like crazy in a rideshare, that's the punk, that's the new punk ride. So, what's your experience with rideshare? Let's break this <laughs> up. I mean, sometimes I got gas. No, I don't say a fucking thing. Is my experience with rideshare? I, well, yeah, you're in New York. I mind my business. I yeah. immediately start ranting about the White Helmets documentary. <laughs> <laughs> what's our experience with rideshare? What's our experience with another form of uh, transportation that everyone loves to hate? I'm talking about air travel people and the other 
hot news What's item of this week. Peanuts there. Right, so you want me to do my twenty minute chunk for my act <laughs> on the airlines? No, no. And United uh, beating the shit out of that guy and kicking him off the plane. Oh, That's yeah. what everyone's been talking about. For they like, say they say bring your seat back up, and I'm like back and up. How do you do both? <laughs> That's my question. What's the deal? The, actually, the Chicago police actually beat that guy up because he said, uh, "Fuck you! I'm getting in the plane, not on it." <laughs> I'm Why really, don't they make the whole plane out of the black box? That's what I want to know. Why don't they make the whole plane out of that Vietnamese doctor? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm very excited uh, for this segment. We have a new friend of mine. As many of you may have heard, I'm an ANCAP now. <laughs> and the guy sort of guiding me through being an ANCAP, his name is Andy ANCAP. He's the fourth biggest uh, fourth biggest ANCAP personality on YouTube. And uh, he has some solutions for this. What is ANCAP, just for anyone who may not? Uh, Andy Cap, everyone's favorite <laughs> fucking, uh, British lout from the comic books. So what would a lot of people get wrong? Uh, the hot fries? It, the hot fries guy. Fries. It starts for, anar- for it stands for anarcho-capitalism, but Andy Cap, that's the official snack of ANCAPs. They invented <laughs> oh, it. It's nice. a volunteerist factory. The workers make $1.09 an hour, and it's a paradise. But all of the hot fries. Yeah. Eat. Exactly. And it's you just eat those and you're like, wow, ANCAP works. But <laughs> I think, uh, I think uh, yeah, we should talk to Andy right now. Andy, what do you think of uh, all this, this controversy over United using the police to you beat the shit out of some guy and throw him off a, a, a plane that he paid for? Greetings and mutual <laughs> non-aggression. Uh, Andy ANCAP at your service. Uh, the ANCAP way to deal with this situation is, well, first that... Uh, the United had absolute property rights to even kill this doctor if they wanted to, as the plane was their property. And the moment that you walk onto somebody's property, you are living by their principles. Luckily, through the non-aggression principle, murders do not usually occur because it would not be mutually profitable for both parties. However, however... We do recognize that there is great statist overreach on the airplanes and even the purchase of tickets, as was the case with this incident. So, the anarcho-capitalist way to solve this problem is to make airplane tickets worth $300,000. <laughs> but they're not a ticket to buy just a single ride on the airplane. It is you own the seat as you would a house. <laughs> <laughs> and with each successive ride it increases in value as it would during real estate. So, if you're a good if you're a good passenger, the market value of your seat rises a good Ten uh, percent year to date with compounding interest, but then you turn it around, you sell it to another guy who wants to fly. This way, because now everyone is a homeowner, there is no more assaults. And there's no age of consent because you're technically a thing. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for having me. I have to go buy a new cape. <laughs> I can't believe we got Andy and Cap. And that's you what got we could get for us. Ugh, I hope this will be the first of many appearances. <laughs> like, I don't agree with him on everything, but he's a smart guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, but like, I, I mean, aside from Andy and Cap, I mean, we all know and respect his opinion, but uh, who the fuck are the rest of these slugs going out of their way to defend United Airlines in this well, situation? What do they call, Wait, they call it? They call it terrorism. Him? Oh, plenty of people. I read something from Tyler Cowen today who was just like breaking down why, actually, according to economics, they really did nothing wrong. I mean, like, what do you, what do you expect well, from this airline? Uh, anyone who. They don't know the difference between rational and moral. Yeah, that well, is true. Moral doesn't mean anything, but uh, that's just gibberish. Rationality is all we have. Uh, no, but like the people who are observing it from afar and choosing to side with the airline, fuck those people for eternity. They're just bootlickers. They're just instinctive, craven, just courtiers of power. But if you were on that plane and you wanted to see that guy get his head caved in, I totally understand. Because I want to get the fuck out of there, and this asshole won't fucking leave. That's what they but- do. They use people's like discomfort of the situation against them so that the- you blame the person being abused by authority. Yes. It's they not just- that they fucking dipshittedly overbooked the flight and then wouldn't pay for more, and are like having like a staff, like using it for staff, you know, uh, 
uh, travel. It's this asshole won't stand up. But I will, this I'll is cut his head off I gotta interrogate it. Like I mean, like this is like interrogation techniques. Like this is this is what the military used to do. I think they've kind of phased it out. But it's like this is the guy that's making it bad for all of you. Yeah, it's the Even though you're all being abused, they pick one guy who is like, well, you know, everything's shitty, but it's his fault. It's private He's pile. making me do this to you. Yeah, smacking private, private pile with yeah. the fucking soap so, uh, soap boxes. But I got to tell you, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that they got those chairs they sat the guys in in Abu Ghraib from the airlines. Am I right, people? <laughs> oh, I mean, they're a torture yeah, city. They're, they're small. They get, Seriously, they I'll tell you smaller. anything you want, <laughs> <Yeah>. Miss Flight Attendant. <laughs> New rule. New rule. <laughs> uh, Chelsea Manning is being released from prison in May. Uh, human rights activists criticized the U.S. government's treatment of Private Manning, saying that it was inhumane to put even a whistleblower in United Coach. <laughs> <laughs> New rule. No, I just <laughs> the loud. The loud. See, at the, the beginning, the loud wasn't present, but now the loud is is loud right now. Yeah. Um, wait, but uh, yeah, we were doing uh, when we were in L.A. Me and Sav and Nick were walking around, and we kept just uh, like seeing something like, uh, you know, why is this guy so bad at parking? Was it? The Republicans. <laughs> <laughs> we just do every joke wait, wait. and the punchline be, uh, the Republicans. <laughs> wait a minute. You were walking in L.A.? I thought that was illegal there, talking about the difference between L.A. and New York. Am I right, folks? Yeah, whose idea was that? The Republicans. <laughs> God, he gets he still he still has a viewership. It's insane, it's insane viewership. And yeah, oh god, I'm so mad at more ways than one. Yeah, I mean, it's just my it's all guys like my dad that just like they love it. They love it because he doesn't pussyfoot around those Muslims. <laughs> it's like. Why can't I believe in sensible gun control and literally destroying the Middle East? <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, wild times. Too. That's too. Is that's, he? That's good. Just like Trump. Yeah, but he's yeah. pro marijuana. <laughs> that's the only. Well, he's, he's pro basically the ganja. On the, if you go to Whole Foods and smoke weed, you should never go to the doctor. He like literally no, believes yeah, he that. He doesn't think germ theory is real. <laughs> he's awesome. New rule. New rule. I don't want to hear anything else about this incandescent theory of light. <laughs> it's phlogiston. Okay, people. I can't. I wanted New to do one, but I can't do the voice. But I really think we could have worked with Louis Pasteur and calling him a Republican. Whose <laughs> <laughs> idea was that? The room home. Thank boiling, you. I can't do boiling, the voice. Boiling water <laughs> to prevent infections. <laughs> <laughs> Whose idea was that? <laughs> you just don't even finish the word. New, new, new rule. <laughs> new rule. If you don't keep a window open to get rid of bad vapors and, and, and bad humored spirits, you have to run for Congress as a Republican. What's wrong with Sarah Pillen? Has she been sleeping in a room with a fan on and having her soul periodically stolen every night from her life? <laughs> She's dumb, folks. Come on, why? Why are you laughing at that? He's also a shameless and like yeah. berating his audience for not laughing. Take it, yeah. You're weak. <laughs> <laughs> He has the obnoxious body language, too, where he does the hand thing, that very, like, oh, look, it's a nervous tick, but it's not a nervous tick. Yeah. Anyway, he is somewhat responsible for normalizing hawkishness among liberals. Anyway. Yeah. New, new rule. If the Arab brain could process democracy. Yeah, the only Jewish guy who's in religious is an anti-Zionist rabbi. Like, get a load of this nutcase. Yeah, yeah, he, the, the, the chosen people were not given Israel by God? Look at this that, that, guy destroyed Bill, that guy destroyed Bill Maher, too, because Bill Maher was like, but don't you think that the only democracy in the Middle East should be preserved? And then he brings up the Holocaust. He's like, well, what about if the Holocaust happens again? Like, great arguments. But the rabbi goes, uh, my entire family was killed in the Holocaust. <laughs> <laughs> and Bill Maher just stands up and goes, fuck this. <laughs> no, he was the, no, that was the one he walks out on. And yeah. It was, yeah. yeah, right. He walked out on that one. That was like, after the guy in the Jesus costume owned him. <laughs> that don't... guy owned him, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jeez, you don't bring Holocaust. a Holocaust to a gunfight. <laughs> <laughs> don't bring a gun to the Holocaust Center. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, I just they, keep they hearing are. that Modern Lovers song down at the government center <laughs> as down at the Holocaust center. Oh, the Holocaust center. Oh, oh, I'm thinking of Costco. Wait, wait, is that? <laughs> <laughs> is that where you got those fucking shoes? No, but I was staying across the street from the Holocaust Museum uh, in L.A. And stop. There's this Did picture. You pick that? There's this Did picture that, that which way? I think is is one of the funniest pictures online. But stop wanted me to recreate it, and I was even like, "Come on, dude, I'm not <laughs> gonna do that." But this guy Danny Green, who plays for the Spurs, the San Antonio Spurs, oh, yeah, yeah. was in Berlin at the Holocaust Memorial, and he's just there's this. He takes a selfie with his hands like to the side, and like big smile on his face is like, and the caption is like, "Holocaust Memorial had to do it." <laughs> 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 yo, so Stav's like, Stav's like, yo, take the Danny Green picture in front of it, like with your arms to the sides. So I'm like, dude, I'm not doing that. You didn't do it. But it is a point. It is a point of like just my tourism. Whenever I visit a city, I go to their Costco to see what it's like, and I do visit their local Jewish museum slash Holocaust <laughs> this Center. It's like some Tom Friedman shit. It's <laughs> called the Costco and Holocaust Museum. <laughs> If your country has more Costco's than Holocaust museums, you might have another genocide. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, we didn't actually end up going. Because I think it should be in Europe. Right, guys? Why is <laughs> it here? Totally. Why in L.A.? Whose idea was that? The Republic? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> So that doctor should have gotten dragged off the plane. What do you guys think? <laughs> no, but <laughs> no. If yeah. I was on the plane, I understand if you wanted to see it. What if, what if, what if they tried to do it to you, Max? That is what how if they tried to do it to you. I would probably. Obviously, I would be very. You don't like it when they get hurt. I would meekly yeah, okay. submit to authority. I'm a terif- I'm a fucking veal cat. No, you're not. You were just telling me today how you almost got like pulled aside by TSA for like throwing one of the tubs <laughs> because you didn't know that to go to Canada you had to keep your passport on you while going through the check. That did so happen. You had a fit. It was a very small fit. You got angry at pub quiz the other night. You, you stood up a- for the injustice of b- uh, incorrect questions. Greenland is not a country. <laughs> yes. Well. It isn't for one it's thing. Part of Denmark, Greenland right? is not. A, yes, exactly. Yeah. Greenland Jesus is not Christ, a country. So the least, the least populous country uh, by land area is Mongolia because it's an actual country, unlike Greenland. Uh, no, but if there's a fucking cop in my face, I'm not gonna mm. get you mad. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a. Fucking, you know what I I'm say a domesticated American. Three words. You're a pug. Letter, I'm a cuck. Three words. Letters of marquee. <laughs> do you have one, sir? No, you do not. By naval law, I can arrest you. Well, did you see like... I okay, love like, the amount of balls that all those Am I Being Detained guys have because they actually do it and yeah. then they just get the shit beat out of them. They're so confident. Oh, I kind, of, I kind of believe those dudes like can only come if they get tased. Yeah, they're, they're into electro yeah. stim. Yeah. They're into electro stim. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, my favorite of like the contrarian United Airlines takes was the, pe- the people who said... You know, a lot of sympathy for this doctor. I wonder how much sympathy there would be if you were wearing a Make America Great hat. <laughs> and I just love that they have to invent these like totally fictional yeah. uh, grievances and then get mad about the thing that now they've invented in their head. that man was white. <laughs> no, got, that's ridiculous. Uh, you know, fair enough. I probably would have thought it was funnier. That's I true. mean, it was still kind of no, funny. Come on. They have a point. But, no, like, but if like, he had a like, stupid hat on, it We would have been, been alarmed by the extension of violence towards a human being well, under, yeah. like, you know, the like, a business. Like, here's, yeah, here's what's great. <laughs> Imagine if it was Bana Olabet. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, this is the thing. Why does the Chicago Police Department have to enforce every bizarre detail of the contract you supposedly enter in with an airline? Because... Because in their modern form, they were invented as the Shabiha for the fat fuck alcoholic dumbasses of the Daily family. <laughs> and so now that the Dailies aren't in power anymore, just any fucking round faced, fucking red nosed Mick retard can give them. He's just tell them to do anything. And they're like, oh, well, it involves beating up a minority, so I'll do it. Uh, that's the CPD. The CPD is bounded by the Constitution to just assault anyone. Uh, that isn't white. Yeah, we f- stumbled upon a fundamental contradiction between private property and public provision. And I remember, and okay, so I, I read about like, how will this affect the markets? Uh, and they're like, yeah, this won't affect anything. No one cares and they're beholden to airlines anyway and they just know... They're just yeah. like, well, yeah, they're, they they're, had a big oh, drop. They, they had a big drop like in stock, anyway. but it's going to yeah, no, come back. There was a dip. They're yeah, like, nah, we're dip. not worried. Not even um, a little bit. Uh, credit are almost, you know, uh, 
our most recent guest after Adam, Alex Perrine, had a really great uh, yeah. article yeah. about how uh, just airline deregulation is like a, a like how airlines work now is like a parody of how like people think capitalism is supposed to work. It's does it it's, it is capitalist, but it works in the exact opposite way in that there's like four firms that control every airline in America mm -hmm. and they have intentionally decided that it's more profitable to not compete with one another and thus just charge more for shittier and shittier service. And guess what? You can't vote with your dollar and go elsewhere. I honestly yeah. think that yeah. I think that the modern airline industry is actually a giant Stanley Milgram experiment to see what like capitalists can get away with. In abusing people, and like that data is being poured over, and like this thing was one of their big experiments. Like, okay, let's kick a guy in the fucking head this and is drag, a Stanford his, drag his kind of yeah, current, drag yeah. his unconscious body through it, and have everyone see it. Let's see what happens. It's like, well, not really anything. I mean, others are some choice Twitter owns that got aggregated by BuzzFeed. Oh, okay. Well, as some people pointed out, now we're just going to administer beatings at random, and you can pay for the privilege of maybe not getting hit. Well, <laughs> I only fly on Virgin. Air, which is like flying at the club. <laughs> <laughs> Bottle service? Yo. No, that's because only they only allow virgins to fly on it. No. Oh, oh. That's not true, dude. It's it's they looked at his shoes and were like, get this man a ticket. First Yo, class. <laughs> shoes are bad, fam. Yeah, these shoes are like my make people angry for the summer shoes. <laughs> I knew what I was doing. Yeah, you're trolling people with I'm their trolling, shoes. I'm trolling the homies, but I love them. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, that, that's catching us up on the, the, the hot news that's, uh, that's bringing up, you know, current events and news and everyone's water cooler discussion. But before we before Adam gets away, I want to talk about a, a topic that's hot to me. Oh, no. Hot, this topic to the trap. <laughs> and I want an update on our boy Popcorn. Yes. He's just having a tough time right now. I, according <laughs> to Snapchat, he's not having a tough time. He's just using a lot of guns. <laughs> And not he's just using them. not Don't using worry. them, but he's just holding them in his Snapchat, and he's listening to a lot of future and so just is Felix. <laughs> yeah, this doesn't sound anything. Yeah. That sounds exactly like yeah. Felix. I just want to see if he's okay. I I sent him, I did send him a snap, and it was just like, "How's everything since you've been out?" And he said, "Good man." So, you All know, right. solidarity well, but, with but popcorn. What's the thing about how uh, he was like? I heard they try to rob me, and he oh, just has no. like a stack next to his ear. He's like, "Heard they try to rob me yesterday," and he's like holding the money that he, apparently people tried to to gank from him. Yeah, he's like, uh, you know, showing a lot of money uh, on his Snapchat and talking about sort of maybe paranoia or not paranoia about people trying to rob him, and but still, you know, waving the money and, and the and the <laughs> weapons around. <laughs> You know, the thing is, is, is like... He, is he smoking gas on, on the snap, though? He's not smoking gas, but he's smoking mad ports. Uh, just busting, but that's legal. You can't... Blasting PO cigs. Can't yeah, he's been smart enough not to that. do drugs on Snapchat, but he does have a lot of guns uh, on Snapchat. But the, I don't know. They could just be doing it for a picture. But I don't know. The whole thing has sort of just taken me on this real emotional journey because I feel like I was following this boy... You know who I thought was was funny. This is your version of boyhood. Yeah, it is like boyhood. <laughs> yeah, it's in that only white men are moved by it. <laughs> uh, I'm glad you got that layup. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Shitting on the white man. I guess I learned something in that lift. <laughs> uh, My God, he can't be taught. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, it's just a it's boy that I was following. And then I found out that the boy got in trouble and I was concerned about the boy. I just thought he was funny because he was like, you know, just uh, had just tr an outsized you know, character. It was like a 14 year old He's that like, thought he was and, like a uh, cracker. Yeah, he thought exactly. He's a he's a rambling boy larger you know? than life larger than love, life it's a, it's and then shit got it's like real if thurman merman uh, got on the gas <laughs> and now <laughs> now i feel sort of like you know like this responsibility to check up on him and make sure he's okay and i really hope he he is okay i really and hope this all ends with you adopting him i, yeah. I really want him to be my son <laughs> 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 and i'm gonna tell him you know what uh, popcorn. I I know that you're a, a savage, but <laughs> I will not accept that kind of language in my household. I don't care if your friends don't mind you using that word. It's <laughs> it's not a word that oh white God. that white folks should be using, and it's got a lot of history behind it. <laughs> and 
okay <laughs> this could be a sitcom we could pitch this tomorrow yeah, uh, yeah. yeah uh, uh, you know I'd an adult comic an adult comic and fan of the internet stumbles upon a struggling young instagram gangsta and feels like he doesn't have anyone in his life. I'll be the role model. Oh, mm-hmm. I know. I'm, you know. And you both go to LA to like start your careers. You as yeah. a com- comic, him as a rapper. Yeah. I told him, I did quote Will, I told Will, and Will's like, well, just tell him to make this money legally in the rap game. <laughs> and so I told him that. And he's like, he's like, yeah, bet, dude. That's what, I, that's what I'm working on right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was like, all right, cool. At least if he still has this dream of being a rapper, which I, I don't know if. Should I if I should encourage? But whatever, you know. Reach for the <laughs> you just stars. Encourage you, you just get, get the legal Go paper. You have a lot yeah. to learn about fatherhood. Yeah. <laughs> there are all these. I just feel like on a larger scale, there are all these people online who like aren't like like uh you know well known that well known. But I feel like I've been following their lives for you know years now, and I feel like really weird about like there's this guy Nick Weed Nick. <laughs> 420 CA that I've just been watching smoke weed online for like <laughs> six years now and like I know like we found out he's married and we found out like he g- got a new apartment and he got rid of the Bob Marley poster <laughs> <laughs> he's going up in the cradle he's of the silver spoon up. you know little it, boy play with the man in the moon exactly I just I feel like I'm following these people's lives and it's just like or just you know regular freak shows from high school that I'm still at 30 years old just like watching have Facebook meltdowns and stuff and just like I love it still <laughs> you know I can't quit them I can't quit all these people <laughs> and I guess I'm just gonna keep them in my lives forever and then write them a letter on my deathbed each and every one of them <laughs> popcorn <laughs> in the voice of Morgan Freeman popcorn I love you <laughs> I've always loved you <laughs> <laughs> You For 60 to. years, I've watched you grow into a beautiful young man. Well, uh, respect to Pop, a true savage. Respect to Adam Friedland, a true friend. Guys. For sticking up for his, his friends. That's yeah. what a true Happy friend birthday, does. Happy birthday, Adam. Happy birthday, birthday as well. Yeah, yeah I'm, well a, I'm a man of 30. Happy birthday to your sister, too. Oh, yeah. Who you, shares the same birthday with you. We have the same birthday, four, four years apart. <laughs> yeah, my dad, <laughs> my dad used to tell all my friends... Uh, it's because my wife only lets me have sex with her once a year. And then all my friends would be like, yo, your dad gets no pussy. <laughs> 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 he thought he was being the cool dad. But by complaining about his sex life to 13 year olds, but he was not cool in their eyes at all. <laughs> <laughs> so next time, Adam... Come town. Any upcoming uh, things you want to plug? We have More funny, uh, moms. funny moms this month. We got. It's actually going to be like maybe the best one we've had. We have really good people this month. Uh, uh, what's but the date? On the twenty fourth, uh, fourth Monday of April, April twenty fourth. They come on everybody if you're in town. And then I think I don't know. There's fuck. I don't. I don't care. Actually, nothing <laughs> else. I have nothing else. Adam Friedland, everybody. Chapo for the week. Till next time. Cheers. Bye-bye, Bye bye. Bye.